Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to JLake3D. So today we're kind of going to the disco because, as promised, I'm going to show you how to make my own version of a disco ball. So we're going to start out by a 100 millimeter circle, and we're going to cut it in half with just a straight line because we're going to use this line as a reference. So now we got to take this line and we're going to copy it over to each side by two and a half degrees to a total of five degrees. If you've watched my uh, grenade tutorial, uh, this should be a breeze. Uh, but anyways, 2.5 on each side. And then we're going to zoom in and make a straight line there. And sometimes uh, the grid is a little tricky. So I like to start with one point and then come to it. And then if it's a circle, just shake it. It makes it straight. And then put the line where it needs to be. And then we're going to trim the edges we don't need because they're going to be in the way slightly as we're working on it. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and offset that straight line so we can have a closed sketch in that specific portion that we want to work on. So go ahead and choose the offset tool and make sure it's not a loop but a single offset so we can get this just that one line and then uh, we're going to go ahead and extrude that by 2.5 millimeters and uh, technically we need five and i'm going to show you why right now so if we go here and uh let's, let's go ahead and uh rotate our circle because we do need a reference point for this as well uh, although we could have used the bottom one, but just, just for the visual, we have this reference now. And let's go ahead and pattern it over by 90 degrees uh, over the top part. And then center that and rotate. And this is why uh, I said we kind of need it at 5. Because as you can see, we, we will get the wrong number of things here. Uh, even though it's technically the right number for the edges. So let's go back and uh, let's hide that sketch. And go ahead and extrude that piece by another additional 2.5 millimeters to equal a total of 5 millimeters thickness. Now we can go ahead and pattern that after we unhide our sketch because we need that reference. Uh, we can go ahead and pattern that by 90 degrees. And we have to find the right number of items that we want to get a uh, close approximation of the perfect shape in a sense. So let's go ahead and make that negative since it went the other way. And uh, now that we have this, we can guesstimate the number of items we need. So I love the pattern tool. I use it very often. As you can see here, it makes the math a lot easier. So for example, uh, you can kind of go back and forth and just see what fits the best. And there, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. But uh, let's go ahead and use 17. And now that we're happy with that, uh, let's go ahead and union those pieces together. And for union as well, you can either select one piece at a time. If you go tools, union one piece at a time or you can use the faster method in some cases for example by holding down and swiping to make that rectangular selection tool all right now that we have that we click done and we have to adjust those faces so basically as you can see here uh, usually in these cases we swipe through we extrude it or we offset the face but it kind of distorts the shape considering this is a not like an average shape so what we are going to have to do here instead of the regular methods is to replace face uh, sadly on each one so it's some manual work here uh, and i will show you a method of how to speed it up though so uh, let's go ahead and <laughs> not uh, ruin our model but let's go ahead and just do the hard manual way but uh, the one that works so we're going to go ahead and undo what we did there and use the replace face tool instead. So let's go ahead and undo. Uh, select tools, replace face, and then select the face we want to replace and choose the face we want to replace it with. And we go ahead and do that for all of them. And then to speed it up, you select it, then select the other piece, except in this case, you have to do the right order because if you select them in the wrong order, uh, they will kind of mess it up. So make sure you select the, the first one tools replace face the first face you want to replace the second face you kind of double click it and then you replace the face you want to do so let's go ahead and finish up the rest and i did skip through a couple here just so you don't have to watch the whole process but you get the point we have to replace the face uh for all of these and then uh once we finish that up this is the last one so i kept it in here uh once we finish that up we move those edges by 2.5 millimeters back to where kind of in the beginning i showed you why we did the five millimeters instead of the two and a half. So we move those back up and then we have to rotate this part by five degrees to one side. And like I said, I couldn't figure out the math for the exact disco ball style. So I kind of 
made my own way after doing some uh, research. So this is this project is basically just a research project, but uh, we subtract that from this one and we delete the excess. And then for these little p artifacts, like uh, technically you won't absolutely need to replace them, but what I do is I go ahead and extrude them through just to get rid of them because I don't want any artifacts left in my complete body. I want it to look really good. Like uh, I know most people probably don't care, but when I work on CAD, I love to work on the little details that nobody ever sees just because I'm a slight perfectionist when possible. Uh, not every project has that opportunity, but if I can perfect something, I will do it. So in this case, you can see those edges too. You can sometimes delete those, sometimes replace the face. It's not always a possibility, just depending on the structure of your model. And then just go ahead and check all the faces if you want to go ahead and copy with me. Uh, so there's actually a couple of faces there too that we can finish up. So let's go ahead and delete those. And uh, if one option doesn't work, let's say extruding it or offsetting face or deleting it doesn't work, there's always the replace face tool. It sometimes works because if you see, if you just extrude this, it kind of just uh, leaves that face there. Could have offset face, but we can technically delete or replace face. So there's many options. There's tools that are similar and you can kind of follow through with those processes. I don't actually, we missed one. So let's go ahead and follow that one through as well. And then uh, once we have those lined up the way we want them, and then also working on uh, small things is hard because sometimes when you zoom in, it's hard to even press on it. So sometimes you can scale it up, do something, then scale it back down as necessary uh, if you are having problems with that. So just keep that in mind. But in this case, like I said, replace face, then delete the unnecessary edge. And we have kind of a desired, you know, body. All right, now that we have that, let's go ahead and continue on. We can simply go and rotate this using the pattern tool. Because if we rotate one at a time, it's going to take a while. But if we use the pattern tool, make sure it's a circular pattern. We can go ahead and do 360 degrees and, uh, I have done this before, so I'm going to know it's 72, uh, just the math. And then this is kind of what differentiates uh, mine from the regular one is that I have these slight edges. But actually, I'm fine with this because it kind of gives it an extra angle to deflect the light even more. So technically, you can manufacture this out of metal and it would look just fantastic. And you can see even inside has those. And you can smooth it out if you make a circle and you subtract from the inside. You can smooth out the inside if necessary. But for this, we don't need it. So let's go ahead and hide the sketches so we can mirror this whole thing and that's kind of why we had the 2.5 instead of 5 on the on the bottom and top because once we mirror it it would have had like a double shape so instead of that now we have the shape that we need and then once we union it it's going to get rid of that body line there in the center as it's going to be one solid piece so let's go ahead and also union this by doing that uh, rectangular drag across and then click done. And sometimes this takes a while. In this case, it was pretty fast. And I am using the beta, parametric beta. So there might be a few glitches here and there. I know I ran into a few, but on this project, it was A-OK. -okay. So let's go ahead and uh, finish this up by making it a uh, reflective metal, just so you can see that it does reflect pretty nicely. And then I won't leave you hanging. I will actually go ahead and make the stand for it, or, or I guess the hanger to make it so you can hang it up the ceiling. So it does look fantastic. Um, I think this looks a lot like those uh, blow up party paper you know, balloons, whatever they're called, uh, that you hang sometimes in a little rope. So it looks fantastic. It kind of looks like origami in a sense. But anyways, let's go ahead and sketch on that top frame. And we're going to do the circle and maybe leave some clearance for it. Because remember, it's going to be spinning, right? So maybe there's a motor with a bearing inside but anyways, let's go ahead and extrude that by 100 millimeters. That's the size of our circle. And make that as a new body so that it doesn't subtract. Because that bottom piece, remember, it was a little bit different. Um, at least that's the view from the top that we had. Now we uh, hide the sketch because it is in the way. Uh, since there's a simpler way to do this by just extruding. So let's hide the sketch. And then uh, let's go ahead and just select it and extrude it as a new body. And we're going to make it into a cone shape uh, by simply scaling the bottom piece. So after you make it a new body, you choose the scale tool and you select that bottom edge and we scale it to make it a cone. And then uh, for the top, you could either extend it if you want to make it sharper, but I'm going to just go ahead and fill it in this case uh, just to make it simple because it looks pretty good this way. 
and this is like a nice little thing to hold it from falling down let's imagine there's a bolt here that holds it in place so we're not going to go into that much detail but we're just going to make an overall shape now for the top i want to have a little stick i think it looks really nice if you extend it over and it's not just connected to the top to the top right away so let's say 50 millimeters is a pretty good number in this case i mean in real life you probably have a much bigger size but let's go ahead and extrude that as a new body just like we did on the bottom and then we're gonna offset the face here to about 25 millimeters i think just <laughs> keep the standard here in sizes 2.5 25 um so you can kind of tell what the designer intended when you're looking at designs but let's uh fill it there by four millimeters and then uh, we could either do a sketch and repeat it or we could just move it down by uh, technically we could have moved it by 2.5 but uh, let's go ahead and scale it by 50 percent and this kind of gives it just a little you know a, i forgot the term for it but a kind of a transitional piece here so we can go ahead and move that up uh, by 2.5 if i can select it here right here um let's do 2.5 and now we have this little transition piece which makes it look really nice and elegant in my opinion so we have finished our product project uh let's go ahead and go to visualize just to see how it looks like and i want to change this to a different type of metal not a reflective one but let's say like a matte color just to give it a big difference from from the actual object so let's say rough aluminum in this case uh, i think it looks really good and uh as we back out here, I think we have a fantastic project. Uh, yeah, again, the math is not perfect in the sense of you know, uh, the math, but uh, I think this looks fantastic. It is actually manufacturable, and it I just, I, I don't know, it's, it's pretty amazing to look at. And this is one of those really, really hard things to do in Shaper just because of all the uh, squares, shapes, and uh, etc. So uh, one other idea we had from a user was to actually export it in a low quality and they would have automatically made it like a <laughs> a lot of squares but uh anyways hope you guys learned something i know i'm talking like a maniac right now that's probably because i haven't slept in two days uh but i hope you guys learned something don't forget to like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye here at j lake 3d our goal is to inspire and empower you to create your own amazing projects please support our work so that we can keep doing it don't forget to like share and subscribe to see more